Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today I'm doing something slightly different for you. Um, I'm just showing you two of my favourite, I suppose, art journaling backgrounds that I do a lot. And I'm doing two at a time that you can see I'm using the same technique on both of them, but they both turn out slightly differently. And the first technique, um, this one that I'm doing here, is how I sort of combine collage and watercolors and all mic making to make some interesting backgrounds. It's This technique is one I do an awful lot when I want to create but I don't have an idea of what I'm doing because the background itself becomes so involved that you could just need to find a simple focal image or even a quote to put over the top and it's sometimes finished in itself. Now the reason I'm doing these um, backgrounds is hopefully <laughs> perhaps by the time that this comes out um, these backgrounds may be available in um, rice paper form for you to purchase and use in your own artwork that's that's the plan but if not um, here's how you make your own anyway they're pretty simple so um, and they're lots of fun to do so I'm just starting off with lots of different pieces of paper um, everything I'm gluing down I'm gluing down with matte gel medium it may look like I'm using a lot of matte gel medium, but in actual fact, I'm really not. I dip my brush in just barely to cover the tip with the gel medium, brush it out thinly over my page where I'm roughly going to stick what I'm doing, and then use the brush that I've got to, or the glue that I've got left on the brush to brush it into the page again. Now, the brushing into the page is really important because it seals the edges, but it also sort of pushes out any bubbles, makes sure everything is really held down together. And I have to say, um, in most of the pieces I have, this technique glues everything down, even thicker pieces of pa paper. So I've never really had an issue with things peeling up after I've done this. And I've used them in quite a lot of different ways. Um, so uh, just go, go easy with the matte gel medium. If it's too wet, it's taking too long to dry, you've probably used too much. And in the long run, it will dry, but you might just need to leave it to dry longer. Because I'm impatient, I use my heat tool to um, dry it. And the next step is I go in and add color. Now I use um, watercolors to do this. I don't know why, because I'm not really a watercolorist, um, but it's easy. And I've actually found, which is again, really odd, because it should water react is um, I'm able to do stuff over the top of this, like put extra mic making over the top and it's um, never really budged the watercolor. So um, that's been really handy. I'm not sure if it's because I use matte gel medium and that has a good ground in it and it means everything sort of stays put, but it works. Now, if you didn't have access to watercolors, uh, you could definitely use watered down acrylic paints to do the same. I probably wouldn't use dye inks unless I was absolutely 100% sure I definitely wasn't going to put anything over the top because they will water react really easily. Um, but use what you've got to color this. So you can see as I'm going, putting down my color, I tend to work in patches of three when I'm doing this and the same with mic making. So I've got three patches of yellow and three patches of pink and three patches of blue. They can be next to each other or away from each other, it doesn't really matter, but um, just putting down those patches is a good rule of thumb and it just gives you a little bit of balance on the page. You noticed with the purple, I just used my brush and blobbed the, the brush down to make some marks on the page or across the page. So you can do your mark making with this too. And th this is what I'm doing at the moment. I'm using some different colored watercolors um, to put some mic making over the top. Now, the colors I'm using at the moment, these are all handmade watercolors by um, Rachel Beth Designs on Etsy and on Instagram. They're quite hard to get your hands on, but if you do get your hands on them, they're beautiful. The neon colors, which you can see coming up, the pink and the yellow on this page, I think are more like a gouache than a watercolor. They, they just seem a little bit more opaque. So if you had something like a gouache to paint over the top that would work really really well um, again you could use acrylic paints to do this and just make them a little bit more opaque than the layers you put in the background so there's no rhyme or reason to it one of the reasons I love using these ones though is because I can put metallic paints over the top um, just so you get that shine and shimmer on the page 
So I'm going in using my brush to make marks. I'm, you know, making little cross plus type marks. I'm overlapping marks. You can see me putting some gold or shimmery colors on top of those little purple dots I've got there. Drawing triangles, drawing dots. And again, I try to put like three areas of marks in in one area so you know I've got three lots of those plus signs and three lots of um, circles or they flow across a page so it sort of ties everything together the next layer to this is going in with some pens to add some mark making so this is a Jane Davenport um, I think it's called the license to quill pen and I found I accidentally dropped it on a page that I had and it made this really cool like um, raindrop effect, a raindrop on the page, which I really love. So I sort of just dot it all over the page. Then I'm just going in with a permanent marker um, and just making some loopy lines and overlapping them and just generally drawing all over this. Now again, it does really help if your page is dry to do this. You can see up in the corner, I was struggling a little bit with my pen because I hadn't quite dried my watercolor off as well as I should have, um, but it still worked. Next, I'm going in with some paint pens. So I would suggest adding some black and some white onto your page. It just really um, brightens up the page. You can see the white going on now, just little dots of white, but it's enough just to add a little bit of interest to the page. And the black, again, gives a little bit of contrast. I also like to go in with just the regular colored paint pens and just add marks over it. And you can draw over some of the um, watercolor marks you've got in the background already or you can add new marks over the top it's really just about playing around and having fun now up in the corner I really didn't like those little things that I drew I wasn't happy with them so I just got another piece of collage painted over the top blended it all in together and you know there you go you've you've changed what you're doing so you can see here, I'm sort of trying to dry it off before I actually go back in and do anything else. And then going in with the white paint pen over the top and sort of filling in the spot. So you can't really tell <laughs> that I had the other thing underneath. And it's a good way to brighten it up. You can see here by putting the paint pen over the top, it just is a little bit more defined than the watercolor in the background. When you actually see this in person, um, you can see all those layers and it works really well, sort of from a distance like this it looks a little bit jumbled but you have to remember when you're doing things like this you are not you're probably not so I won't say you're not you're probably not going to be using the whole piece you're going to be tearing it up into pieces or using it as a body of a figure or um, using it as a little bit of interest or cutting it into a flower you could die cut it there's so many different things you could do with this um, doing pages like this onto a piece of cardboard are great ways of doing um, backgrounds for cards so you could quite easily cut that into four and you've got a really cool background for a card put a die cut sentiment across the center of it and you know really really simple and every card you sent out while you've done the same technique on it is going to be different and unique so I think that's why I love it you can sort of do the same thing but you're always going to come up with something unique from it so this is the second technique that I'm doing and it's something I've been doing a lot recently and it's basically just scraping acrylic paint over the surface of your paper substrate whatever you're working on. Now the secret to this one is that you need to dry off the layers as you go. The reason for that is if I scrape wet paint over wet paint it's going to start to mix and my colors are going to start to muddy. If I dry off the layers because acrylic paint is permanent, it is going to stay what it's supposed to be and you're going to get really bright, vibrant colors on your page. So it's a really great way to make a multicolored background but still see all the colors and enjoy what's going on in the background. It, again, like the last piece, can look very busy and, you know, lots going on on the page. But it's um, a good background that you can sort of put it one focal image over the top of or again like I suggested with the last one if you're a card maker or a scrapbooker you know cut it into pieces and use it to back your work you've got a really interesting piece that doesn't take too long to put together so depending on the colors that you use will obviously give you um, the effect that you're going for I love mixing it up and having warm colors cool colors and so on over the top of each other if you wanted to get fancy 
um, within this you could start you know ghosting away layers putting a stencil over the top and wiping some of the paint away so you can see the colors underneath it gives you a really cool effect as well um, or you can just keep it as straight paint the thing I like about this is you can sort of look at it as you go along and go oh I've lost this color so I need to put some back in so I don't think I end up going back and putting any in but you can sort of see that the yellow I had has sort of disappeared because I've put some stronger colors over the top so I could go back in and put a punch of yellow in if I wanted to um, I really like that blue so I'm going back in and just adding some blue over the top layer so I've got that color coming through again so it really is being very intuitive and just looking at it and going do I like this what don't I like about it what do I need to add to it so I like it again and making sure that every layer that you have is dried in between I use a heat tool because I'm really impatient you could leave it to dry in between and then boost the color afterwards it's up to you so with a lot of my artwork you will have noticed probably I really like using neon colors putting neons on things are kind of like um, boosting the color on your Instagram or putting a filter over something neon paints are usually translucent so they just boost the colors underneath now um, these are the Amsterdam neon paints they're all called reflex in the Amsterdam range so reflex rose reflex orange reflex green um, Dilusions has just come out with a range of neon paints. I think they're um, called cocktail drinks. I can't remember. And um, oh, quite a lot of places have, have neon paints, but they all have the same sort of property. They are all quite translucent, so they just boost the color over the top. So once I've finished my paint, I'm now going in with some stamp and mic making. And again, you can use any stamps. I just happened to use these stamps from Scrap FX because I had them sitting next to me. And I am using a permanent ink. So I'm using archival ink um, because once it's dry, it's there. And again, it's sitting next to me. It doesn't really matter what, what inks you use. Um, well, sorry, I say that. It does help if you're doing this um, to use permanent ink because if you use one dye inks wouldn't really sit on top of this because it's um, acrylic paint so it's got nothing to absorb into um, pigment in inks you could use but you'd have to heat set them and again I don't know how I'm going to use these pages so if I want to put something water soluble over the top or you know glue it down or something dye and um, pigment inks may move so just you you're better to go with um, permanent ink so with this I'm just again being pretty random with what I'm doing I'm overlapping a lot I'm overlapping off the page as well and that's really important when you're doing design elements on your work if you have sort of everything floating in the middle it doesn't connect to the edges so having those circles go off the edge having those lines go off the edge makes a huge difference to how it balances out the piece you can be as random with this as you want um, I'm printing these stamps out a number of times they're not perfect prints because I want a sort of grungy background look having a balance of black and white on your page is also pretty important um, so for my sort of final layers you'll notice I put in some black and some white to, just to balance up the page a little bit and it just helps um, draw your eye around the page I suppose a little bit more gives your eye a path to travel so you can see with those numbers they're sort of curving around the page a little bit through those lines and um, so it leads your eye down through the page even on both sides they've sort of done that at when I do it I'm not thinking about that I'm just doing and um, it's only when you sort of go back and look at it you can kind of see that and with most of us we're pretty pretty good at doing that we we work subconsciously so we really don't know why it's working we just do it so um, trust yourself and again if you hate this at the end cut it up into pieces it makes great ACT cards and um, once it's cut up into pieces you won't tell the difference of the bits you like you didn't like so um, you know this is a great play technique to use hopefully when all these pieces are finished um, the aim is they may possibly be turned into something that you guys can be using in the future um, but I'm not going to give you too much information on that until it's actually um, known so 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found these um, backgrounds really useful and I hope that you can use them in your art journaling in the future as well. Till next time, bye for now.